Ondo politics. INEC yet to recognize the APC governorship primary as all their parties with their chances. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. INEX report yet to recognize APC's governorship primary in Ondo. Barely weeks after all the barely weeks after the all progressives congresses the APC governorship primary in Ondo state that produced Governor Loki Ayedatiwa as the standard bearer. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is yet to append its seal. Ayedatiwa was declared the winner of the exercise by his Kogi state counterpart and chairman of the primary elections committee, Usman Ododo, after polling 48,569 votes to defeat others. In the purported report submitted by some of the officials of the electoral body, it reveals that there were alleged cases of irregularities in some parts citing failures such as non-arrival of electoral materials and lack of proper collation of results. In a larger local government area, the report reads, quote, in compliance with the directive of the commission and as part of INEC's statutory function to monitor and report political party primaries, members of staff were deployed to the 12 RAs that made up the local government area to monitor the primaries. With the primaries marked by controversy, no fewer than six contestants submitted petitions to the party's appeal committee and even threatened to approach the court for alleged manipulations. When contacted, an INEC official who created anonymity declined to comment on the document citing its sensitivity. We have been joined by a political analyst, Biodu Shomumi. Also joining us is the Deputy Director General, Olushola Oke, Campaign Office, Rotimi Williams Ogunaye, a PDP chieftain in Oshun State, Larry Olayenka, and a lawyer, Alan Showere, will be joining us as well. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you for having me. Yeah, good evening. Uh, show me, let's start with you. Let me, let me, let me, let me quickly correct. I'm, I'm not from Oshun State, I'm from Ekiti State. Yeah, you're from Ekiti State. I thought as much, yes. but the last time, the last time they wrote it, you accepted it. Uh, I know you, you were once the spokesperson of uh, former governor, Ayodele Fayoshi. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, be able to show with me, how would you want to start on this? Well, um, the primaries came and gone. INEC is expected to attend or to, to be invited to monitor the primaries. Um, INEC has done so um, from all indications and from um, your own statement, INEC actually attended the primaries. So that is why they have their own notes on what they consider to be irregularities. In as much as um, INEC is um, an umpire, INEC is not expected to be a judge in this matter, in the sense that INEC on his own cannot disqualify a candidate or order a Liron of the primaries or order a new primaries completely. Um, at best, what they can do is to make notes of their own readings of what happened at the primary, which they have actually done so. The bottom line is, is now down to the political party. As long as INEC has attended, uh, you know, to now use the evidence produced by INEC, the irregularities, and determine whether it is substantial enough to invalidate the result of the primary. If it's in isolated areas, in some few local government or some few polling units, then my reading is they probably will uphold the um, the nomination of um, Governor Ayedatiwa. But mm. substantial. Uh, if it's substantial, 
Okay. Uh, lay a line to the point that uh, they consider it to have mm. the results of the primaries, mm. then they are likely going to cancel it. Mm. Okay. Uh, le let's let's mm. attend to uh, the technical glitches you are having with your device. Lady Alayinka, uh, it does seem that uh, it does seem that the APC has perfected the art of scoring on goals against itself, especially when it comes to gubernatorial matters. Uh, they had a very shoddy first round in Edo. Uh, they had they had a very controversial one too in respect of the shadow election that ultimately produced Ododo in Kogi is almost becoming uh, is almost becoming uh, quite um, natural with with APC. Although you are a PDP chieftain and I guess you'll be gloating and you'll be gloating on this. What's the response? Well, let me, let, let, me, let me say this first and foremost, that uh, the, the function of uh, the, the duty of, of uh, conducting primary and uh, producing a candidate is, 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 the, is the responsibility of, of, the, of, of, of the political parties. I, 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 I am not a lawyer and I don't know the particular section of the electoral act, but I, but I also know that the electoral act made it mandatory now because the, 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 the before the operational world used to be INEC, INEC monitor. Hello? I'm listening to you. We Hello. can hear you. Yeah, the the operational world before now, I think before the last amendment was that INEC may, may monitor. But this the, 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 this time, I think the, the operational world has changed that INEC shall, which has made it mandatory for INEC to monitor. And when you have made it mandatory, it also means that INEC has a role to play. It also means that whatever report INEC comes out with has a very strong uh, impact, will have a very strong impact on, on that primary election that was that was that was said to have been held. If the only the, 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 the only aspect of it will not be how how useful would that uh, would that report can that report be? The report can be useful if any of the aspirant goes to court and it is it is strictly those who participated in that primary in the APC. Uh, aspirant in the PDP or candidate of Rotspi or member of PDP cannot cannot go to court to challenge the primary. And I also know that even even member member of APC cannot go to court to challenge the primary. Those the only people that can challenge the primary will be those who participated in the primary, those who uh, that will be the aspirant that as well in the primary. But let me also say this that one of the, the easiest primary election to to manipulate is direct primary election because when you are going to direct primary you don't you do there's no there's no control anywhere you can only you can always come out to say to 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 to, to give to, to give results let me give you an example in the in the primary election that produced a uh, uh, governor governor uh, governor from Wolu in lagos that produced him as candidate in, in 2019 um, in, in that primary, I think Governor Sosawulu was said to have scored like 950 something thousand votes in the primary. And other, other aspirants like Ambode and others, those who had 50,000, those who had 100,000 and all that. And if within the primary, within the APC, you had a primary election where someone had 900,000 votes plus, and that person in the, in the normal general election, now at some, so, so I think I think about several several fifty thousand votes or so. So it means that even even in his party, so about over two hundred thousand people that purportedly voted for him in the primary did not because vote from your political party members are, are assumed to be to be automatic for you. The other ones that you now look for is uh, Lily, so, Lily, so, Lily. So, uh, uh, Lily, hello, the, yes? the phenomenon, the phenomenon with which you are making your very logical submission, is a peculiar phenomenon that is actually very disturbingly prevalent in all the parties. When it internal, is, when it supposed, is, let me, let me, I, I, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. You will respond to it. Okay. You will respond to it. When okay. supposed democratic process is to be held within parties especially the two main parties in Nigeria 
we get to see uh, we get to see votes that when ultimately the general election comes or the substantive election comes, those votes ironically will be far more than the number of eligible votes cast for the candidates of the party at the substantive election. It's not peculiar to it's not peculiar well, to the one you alluded to. Well, well that can only happen in, in any party that that adopt direct primary. And you and I know that the only party that has that that, that have done direct primary is APC. PDP does not do direct primary. Indirect primary is, is conducted with the use of delegates. So even before you if, even even before even you that you are not a you are not a member of PDP, you will know the number of delegates to vote in the primary. So if you know the number of delegates to vote, for instance, in, in the state with one as of seven words, you are you are going three where PDP does three 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 delegates per word. So you, you, you times you, you, you multiply three times one hundred and seven. So you know that delegate coming to vote in a governorship election primary will be one hundred and seventy seven times three. So you cannot now come back and get vote that is more than that. It is delegate election. But, and then, but, uh, what, I, I, I understand of, you. I understand you. But, the, uh, let, the, let, the, let, me, let me just this one sentence. One of the bedrock of a credible election is for you to know the number of people that are coming to vote. If you don't know the number of people that are coming to vote, then that election can never be uh, uh, Whether primary or general election, that election uh, can Larry, never be Larry, I'll come back to you to answer this. Uh, what is the integrity relative to the organic definition of democracy? What is the integrity of indirect primaries? When we know the circumstances, especially what is now uh, ongoing in Edo State. Because as we speak in Edo State now, the PDP are split into two factions. One because one person commands the resources as the incumbent governor practically generated his own, his own uh, delegates. And the legacy party is now saying, you know what, that the characters that were generated by the deep pocket are not, or were not bona fide members of their party in the offices that ought uh, to vote. But I'll come back to you. Let me go to Biodi Shomumi. Biodi Shomumi, I know uh, you may seem to be... Biodi Show is Biodi Shomumi there? I'm here. I can hear you. Oh, fantastic. I know there is a part of you, uh, the political analyst part of you, that wears an ostensibly neutral, neutral uh, a cap or a non-partisan cap. But uh, anybody who knows you well enough knows that you it it will not be untoward to call you an APC strategist. Uh, does somebody like you? Talk to the leadership of the APC that this is becoming, uh, this is becoming one time too many for the party, and is almost stigmatizing. Almost stigmatizing is that building uh, line? I wonder if somebody like I you, can tell you. you know what I'm I, I, I know is if somebody like you, uh, you know, uh, talks to the the leaders of the party that is about time they did something to correct this uh, seeming on, on goal that stigmatizes the image and the democratic reputation of the party. How would you respond to that? Well, um, one thing we need to, with due respect to my colleague, one thing we need to understand clearly is that um, there is no system you choose whether direct primaries, indirect primaries that are not fraught with um, challenges. Um, I can give a very good example. In direct, in direct primaries, you, have, you must have heard of allegations of delegates um, list falsification. You know, where people... I, I just gave him the example of a do state. It's still extant. And, uh, and the contention is still on. Indeed, the legacy Absolutely. party, those who accepted, uh, who accepted Obaseki into PDP, are now saying categorically 
that want to conduct them with the Sharia, that they, they are not subscribing okay. to it. And even in addition to that, the indirect primary is more suited to regain than the direct primaries. And the simple reason is this. It only favors the incumbent. The delegates, part of those delegates will be the commissioners, the special advisors, and picked by the governor. And also the chairman, local government, you know, uh, councils, which in any case are proteges of the government. So already in indirect primaries, through the delegate system, the process is already read against other opponents. So it is more... Uh, sorry, me, to so, so, to sorry, me. Uh, so, sorry, sorry for my incessant uh, interruptions, but uh, to further corroborate the, the point you just uh, proceeded now, it was ironic that on the day of the ballot in the Edo uh, PDP uh, governorship uh, a, a shadow election, all the delegates were shall be so one wondered how the delegates could have prearranged to to get the Ashwabi, you know, get the Ashwabi sold, and they came and any any reasonable human being or any sane human being would expect them to vote in a manner that would be reflective of a very organic democratic uh, democratic exercise. Just thinking aloud. Yes, that's it. That's a clear indicator of what I've been trying to say. In indirect primaries, most of the delegates are already influenced, you know, by the government, either through appointments, you know, or through um, elections into local councils. And in that situation, where you already have to talk of the delegates, you know, appointed in this manner, uh, you already know the results, you know, it's uh, straightforward. So for me, if we are to grow participatory democracy, indirect primaries is not the best for us. Um, rather is direct primary. Direct primary also has its own problems. You know, for instance, um, the issue of overvoting can arise. The issue of undervoting or suppression of votes or violence can also uh, arise. But, before I quickly go, before I quickly go to your colleague, Dr. Uh, uh, when I hear that from somebody like you, whose background I know, you know, and your antecedents in democratic dis uh, uh, disposition, I know, I, I, I shake my head because ordinarily. Ordinarily, the definition of democracy is not just built around vote casting. It starts is it, a process, and one of the one of the most imperative features of the process of the democratic process would be to have a coalition exercise. Uh, would be to have an accreditation exercise prior to a balloting exercise. So, if the parties claim to have a register of their members, let the world see this register of your members. Let the accreditation be done against the integrity of the register and let's know the bona fide voters, like any democratic process would ordinarily uh, would ordinarily countenance. I, I wonder why people like you are now saying, and even your colleague agrees on that, that you know direct direct primaries are fraught, it could be manipulated. Is it because it could, is it because the parties have chosen not to give us a credible membership register, and because they just decide on that day? to just let some people line up and they can write anything they want to write. Just talking, it's not peculiar to APC now. Just talking no. generally the condition of our so-called internal party yeah. democracy no. in Nigeria. No matter how we look at it, in order to promote internal democracy, it is still fair better to do direct primaries, irrespective of the challenges faced, because you will not have some few people sitting somewhere deciding for the entire party membership who have paid their honor dues, rather than those people who paid their dues actually voted. Yes, uh, there will be problems along the line, like, for instance, the business of um, those who are supposed to vote is the internal affair of that political party. I don't think it's a matter, you know, for the whole country. It's different from if you are contesting in national elections where the polling, the, the, the voters' list can be openly displayed. Okay. So, and as far as I can see, um, party formation 
and his membership is strictly the business of the members of those political parties. But that does not mean that we should not seek to grow internal party democracy in order to ensure increased participation in let, let me go. Let me go to your point. I colleague. actually think that let me a credible to... process, a credible process will involve having a credible, you know, electorate, you know, within the political party who are able to freely choose whoever they want to be their candidate. It's better assured. Let me go to Larry. Let me go to Larry. Let me go to Larry now. Uh, Larry, uh, it does seem. Yeah, it, it does seem to me uh, from. Uh, the reasonings, logical reasonings of the two of you, it all seems to me that we're talking about six and half a dozen. Uh, uh, what? Sa uh -huh. Same of the shame, you know, for uh, no. of the two main parties. Well, we, we, we are not talking about two process that is the same. Let me, let me first correct, let me first correct a, an impression that uh, my, my friend gave. He gave me, he, he mentioned that uh, commissioners, uh, local government chairmen and other can be some delegates. That that was in the past. The, 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 the current electoral act has taken care of that. The moment you are a political appointee, you are disqualified from being a de, from being a delegate in an uh, indirect in indirect primary. The moment you are even a party party as member of party as could be that the state, local government world at national level, you are or you are automatically you know before before there are categories of of of, of party ESCO member that were that that that, 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 that used to take part in 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 any direct primaries like members of the state ESCO uh, in PDP it was more five members of of, of the world is the chairman vice chairman secretary youth leader and women leader then uh, the the local government ESCO and the state ESCO uh, the former former this former that 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 are no longer obtainable. If you want to do that in the primary now, you elect your delegate. In in the state, it is three three per ward. Those three people are going to act, are elected by the party members in the at the ward level. The difference between an in why why in why why in the primary to me is more credible than in the than the primary is that you know the number of delegates that are coming to vote. Those delegates in in most cases at the ward level. They, are, they match either through election by consensus or by compromise. Already, in some months now, they already, they already know those who will delegate in the next two, three, four, five years. They, it, 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 is the, it is their, it is their, what, it is, it, it is their uh, uh, internal arrangement. And in most cases, even if you are the governor, you, the, the only thing as the governor that you can have is the power of, uh, of, of patronage. In most cases, you are not able to control them. Let me give you an example. At the, the in the state where we had the when we had the, the primary election in 2022, as at, as at the time as at the time the delegates who voted in that primary election were being elected, Shegun Oni was not in PDP yet. He was not in the PDP. For instance, in my in my own town, we had we had three wards. We had three wards. About uh, I think eight. Of the delegate from my from those three wards did not vote for the person that I supported, and I was the one who produced all those delegates. They did not vote for the person I I, I supported. They voted for Sheikh Mouni. I think two or three of them voted for someone else. But the most important thing about having a, an a, an indirect primary is you already know that oh you have five hundred delegates that are coming to vote. If you are going to canvass them. If I, uh, you also mentioned the issue of uh, in Edo State that some people came, they were actually be and all that. If you if you have power to convince those delegates and to you get them to your side, so be it. So be it. And let me also tell you that there is no way anybody can come up with a fake delegate list because the organ of the party whose duty is to is to conduct congresses that will produce delegates is clear in the concern of the party and in, in, in the electoral act. It is the national party, the one that was held in Ondo State, even in APC, those who came to conduct that primary were appointed by the national. Those who came to conduct the one of PDP were appointed by the national party. So if the people coming from Ant, the, 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 the danger in that 
direct primary is that the, those who came from Abuja to conduct the primary can choose not to go to anywhere. It happened in Imo State. They just took materials, filled the form, and returned the results. And so be it. So, and, and, and the moment they are able to get INEC official to compromise, because what is happening on those days now is that those INEC official probably refuse to compromise. If they have compromised, they will give reason not to write a report. They write the report and say that the primary, the, the, the primary took place in all the wars and all that it was peaceful, uh, even though there were sky missions in one or two wars, but it was it was it was easily brought under control by the police and uh, some other security and um, security agencies. And they will submit the report. That would be it. A problem. Maybe, maybe, uh, let, let me also say this, I, I don't want to, maybe also negotiation did not, did not go well. But in most cases, maybe they did not go well. If maybe they, they, they refuse to compromise, you know, or negotiation did not go well, and all that. I, I, but the most important thing is that you cannot go into, into an election, because my brother that just that, that spoke here, if I ask him now, what is the number of APC members in his world? He does not know. I don't think he knows. And you cannot tell me that you are coming to, to do a primary election in your world, and you don't, you don't, you don't know at least the, the assumed number uh, of people Lere. that will vote. Yeah. Lere, uh, Lere, um, uh, okay, uh, okay. okay. Uh, respond, respond, to, respond, respond to him. Respond, yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, one thing which Lere is not talking about, clearly, is that the arrangement which he has painted, painted within the PDP is so clear. It explains why we have cash and carry politics. You know the number of delegates. You know how, many, how much you need to pay per delegate. We've been saying, go and look at it, whether it's within APC or PDP or any political party, where you have indirect primaries. That is, where you have a delegate system to choose any candidate. There are always allegations of money flying around because we have just a few number of people, a couple of thousands of people, you know, to, uh, to woo to your side. And that is why... You see them wearing the same uniform. You must have heard of reports of delegates being camped, you know, in a particular hotel being fed, you know, dying and being moved from there straight down to the voting ground. Lele, how would you respond to that? Primaries. But it's totally different Lele. where you have a direct primary. Okay, let him, let him respond to the point. Small. You've just made you just made a very interesting point. How would you respond to the point just made by the other show with me, Larry? Well, let me let me let me say this too again. <laughs> is it, you, are, you are scratching your head. Cash and carry, cash and carry in politics is everywhere. Even during general election, during general election now, you are talking about delegates being paid and all that and all that. During general election, we, don't we also witness what people have come to the Boko Shebe? It is a general election now, and people people have come up with 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 with, uh, with, with means of also identifying that in this polling unit we are likely to get one hundred votes, and this voter will get five thousand naira or ten thousand naira, and you give the money to some people when the, whoever votes signify to somebody, and the person get the signal, put the names down, and collect and, and collect money. So you even if, even in, Lere, in this other Lere, primary too, uh, people, people 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 are people pay people are paid money. Okay, that uh, is the truth. I'm only saying that. I think it is. I'm, I'm I think it is imperative at this juncture. Lere, uh, Lere, is so Lere, I think it is imperative mm -hmm. at this juncture that I really mm -hmm. ask you, uh, as we speak now, uh, youngsters mm -hmm. who probably are students of government or students of politics are listening to us. And I know that what you're saying is actually the practical definition of real politics in Nigeria. But the way you're seeing it, it does seem as though you are validating it. Um, what is your personal take of the, of the incongruity that democracy has become in our polity? Given I, I am not I, I am not validating anything. Don't don't I am not validating. You see, there is there is difference between saying this is this is the way this is what things have become. I am a victim of, of it and I, I will not validate it. So if it, if it has become our norms, for instance, I was I, I was saying like I think two or three days ago when we we're talking about the labor issue and I and, and I and I said something. 
Somebody will tell us that uh, a, a legislator is receiving a, a huge amount of salary and all that and all that. And I, told, and I told the person, how many, how many requests do you think a legislator gets every day? Come and give me money. Come and pay this. Come and do this. Pay my children's school fees. Uh, pay for this. My somebody is in the hospital. I know that. In those days, when when some of us were going up during the Awolo War, UPN NPS stuff, some of us did, did not even get to know who was who was representing us in the House of Assembly. We did not know who was in the Senate. That, that kind of thing was did not happen. But it is happening now. Unless we get to a level that we now begin to and and, and that is and that is what we pay of our democracy. It is the bane of our democracy because it is it, we have turned into a, a norm where people who are going to vote now are going to vote and the people who even get to the police union and ask for okay your party how much are you paying the other party how much are you paying and you end up that well it will end up that whoever that is paid the is will, get, will, will, will win the election and I am not saying that, like we are talking about primary, I am not saying that uh, uh, this uh, indirect primary is 100% perfect. It is not. I am only saying that okay. the two uh, are not perfect, the one is better than the other. Show that me, the, the other show yes. me, listening to Larry, yes. one may feel, listening to Larry, uh, a puritanical Democrat may feel somewhat perturbed. But the, the truth be told, he is speaking to real politic, the reality of our dirty political environment. And the, the gentleman is only, is only reportorially giving us the portraiture of the madness that defines not only internal party democracy, but indeed the larger exercise of democracy in our polity. How would you want to respond to, to that reality? Yeah, of course, um, Larry is right on that. I uh, concur that um, this is not what we bargain for when we talk about democracy, uh, being um, uh, the, the government of the people by the people for the people. And therefore, the method of being in governance or occupying positions of responsibilities in a democratic setting should actually involve uh, the people, not in, through in, in, inducement, but through genuine participation of the people in selecting who they want. In my view, I think the presidential system of government which we adopted, you know, is not suited to our own environment. I'm glad they pointed to um, the 60s when um, um, the Awolo era in the First Republic. What we witnessed, we had a different system. It was a parliamentary system in a confederal arrangement, whereby even parliamentarians were on part time. So there was no need. Those who are working are even better paid than the parliamentarians. So there was no need for anybody to go, you know, and hazard them for money. And I think uh, it's this idea of winner takes all that has corrupted the minds of our politicians in a way that they sell houses and sell a lot of things to ensure that they clinch the party ticket and win elections at all costs. And that is a major problem. We stand with change from presidential system of government and embrace a parliamentary system of government where even if you have no business, you don't want to have anything to do, for instance, uh, with um, uh, Ikoi, you can only say, look, you have formed your party, you only want to represent the people in Mushin alone, and then you will be voted for, you'll be allowed to participate in the election. But what we have currently is that we have a system where you can only access you know, the electoral process through the political parties. The political parties are formed you know, by the big wigs. And it costs billions to run a political party. So therefore, um, the um, parties are the ones responsible. Yes. Me. Do you really think? Yes, I can hear do, you. Do you do you really think the the malady uh, revolves around the system we practice or the characters who are who are playing the system? Uh, because we need to be very honest with ourselves, you alluded to the First Republic. Uh, indeed, you alluded to an era prior to the First Republic, because many watching us may not know that Awola was Premier of Western Region from 1953 to 1959. Awola was indeed just a parliamentarian you know, after independence, from October 1st, 1960. 
So I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, is it the system or the, the, what we have become as a people? I, I want you to respond to that. Well, I believe that is the presidential system of government that has debased, you know, the method of assessing political power. And what do I mean? When you want to form a political party, if you remember when we started with the presidential system, you must have a party office, not only in Abuja, in every state of the federation. And that is why it became so expensive. And those who are able to fund it and fund all the structures are the ones who are able to assess the electoral process and eventually okay let, let me give you let me give you let me give you a scenario that I, I would love to hear your your opinion on what stops us at this juncture having experimented with uh, an a, a seemingly burdensome a seemingly burdensome party party system what stops us from allowing uh, from allowing indi uh, individuals to just go out there in a constituency and sell themselves to the, con to, to the voters in that constituency. That's independent candidature. That would have also given us the, the same rationale that you are speaking to now, I even without changing the system from presidential, presidential system. If that, that is correct. We can introduce independent candidacy within presidential system of government. But what we are discounting is the fact that presidential system of government is too expensive to run. You know, it has created several layers in a way that it does not increase participation in governance, while at the same time it's consuming a huge part of the national resources needed for development. Then it has created a stru different structures where corruption tribes, because the process of even nominating candidate, when a candidate, for instance, who wants to contest an election has to go around, maybe as of uh, representatives, the whole uh, uh, constituency, you know, to campaign, to lobby and do all that, you know, it's damn very expensive. That's the fact of the matter. And by the time you get to Abuja, you have also the, the, the other complications uh, in terms of the emoluments being paid, you know, to, uh, I'm referring to the salary plus allowance, you know, to uh, legislators, including senators. That's another burden on our country. So I don't think it's right uh, for us to continue with this train. This train is heading in the wrong direction. It's not giving us the right results. I, I must, uh, uh, before, before, I go to, before I go to Larry, I, I must accept the fact that um, in a parliamentary system of government, there wouldn't have been, there, there wouldn't have been need for for people who are not elected members of parliament to be to constitute uh to be members of the executive so Absolutely. appointing people who who don't have electoral validation to to run the executive arm of government would ordinarily not have uh, that would have saved some Absolutely. cost you will have, you will have had to be an elected Representative, before you can be a minister. Okay, that let, is how it's supposed let, to let be. Let me go to Lere now. Let me let me go to Lere and be a bit more surgical on the issue uh, that, that we are we are actually speaking to uh, tonight. Lere, it, it would yeah. seem. I, I want to believe. I, I don't pretend to be to be a lawyer, or, and I don't pretend to be a court of competent jurisdiction. But it would seem that INEC may just be, be doing what it, it is reported to be doing. That is yet to accept the, uh, the shadow election, the governorship shadow election of the APC. Uh, they may just do that for as long as it may take, but ultimately INEC does not have the statutory wherewithal to put that into force. It's only a court of competent jurisdiction that can do that. Uh, am I thinking wrongly or am I just... Well, well I, 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 said, I said this from the beginning. I said, this, but is it that if it is true that INEC has come out with that, that kind of report, I can tell you that it has very damning implication. 
because the moment the foundation is faulty, then the person going to court has valid document. It is it is like it is like saying that uh, uh, in a football match you claim that in a football match or you or you claim that in the in a, in, in, in in an examination you scored twenty you score you score sixty marks instead of thirty marks that that uh, you should score thirty marks and the examiner come comes up with a report that you did not even sit for the exam at all. It invalidates your claim to have to have scored sixty marks. So the issue here is that the issue the issue now is who is who who is qualified who to go to court? Who has the 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 locals like the lawyers who say to go to court? And I'm aware that one of the aspirants, I think Senator Jimmy Bryan, is already in court. He has he has locals to go to court. He has the right to go to court because it is only those who participated in the APC private that can go to court. So it is now left for the court to look at the reports and and then determine whether or not the primary actually took place. But the report of INEC in, in a party primary to produce a candidate is very, very important. It's very, very important. And let me also let, let me also correct another impression by my friend there. The the Awolo war period that I mentioned, I was not born in 1960. So I did not I did not witness the parliamentary system of government. I witnessed the one of I witnessed the one in the in, 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 in the seventy nine twenty three. I, I saw the I, and, and and let me say this: it is not about the system of government. It is not. It is about we Nigerians. It is about the people of Nigeria. If you like, tell me, didn't the presidential system of government work between 1979 and 1983? It worked. At least some of us experienced it. At least in the southwest, that period was a period that. You don't need. You did not need anything apart from your school uniform to go to school. The only thing that is the only thing that I, and I ah, when I was going to the secondary school was that my parents did for me was to was to, to was to give me school uniform. And because my school was was a new school, the, the, the students were mandated to, to build their own uh, their own uh, chair their own their own chair and desk. And the chair and desk belonged to us. We put our name. When we are going on vacation, all of us will carry it on our head and take it to our house. When I finished in that school, I took the desk, the locker, whatever, to my house. Every other thing I got free, textbook, uh, exercise books, and everything I got free. We went to the hospital, we were, given, we were, we were treated free. The presidential system of government produced an adjacent as the governor of Odondo State. It produced a bonaige as the governor of your state, it produced a uh, uh, the bishop of Nobanjo in Okun. It produced Latif Jakande. By the time Latif Jakande was becoming governor in 1979, people, students were going to school in Lagos State, they were doing shift morning, afternoon, evening. Because of lack of classrooms, he solved that problem within six months. I can begin to mention what what happened when, when Ajase was governor. That was when we had Ondose University. That will now have been that was replicated in Nondo. That was when we have on the white glass. That was when we have the bricks. That was when we had the uh, uh, ceramics. As, as, as wonderful as wonderful as as wonderful as those days were. Uh, we must. That was, we must that was when we had the governor. We had the governor Agassi who left government the way he came. He did not build a new house in Owo anywhere. When he was governor. So, the first time of government produced that. So, what went wrong? What went wrong? It is not the system. It is the people of Nigeria. People of Nigeria are the ones that want to vote for you. You are almost, you are, you are almost making me to want to quote Shakespeare. The fault, my friend, is not in our stars. <laughs> but, so, is is actually a character that has gone bonkers. It is a character. Yeah. The character of Nigeria to want to believe that anybody that goes to public office and comes out without money, without it is a, in those days. In those days when we were growing up, I, I remember. I remember. I, I, if I had the time, I'll tell. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story here. I went to my father's farm to pick kula nut. It we had we had opportunity of picking kula nut that, that from the ground in the farm we picked, and I sold. I was in primary school then. 
From the money that I got from the coal and oil, I went, I bought a packet of St. Louis sugar. My grandmother collected the sugar from me, took it outside, threw the sugar away, and I was beating so mercilessly because I bought sugar with my own money. And what did my grandmother say? My grandmother said, this boy, Lanere, is going to, I, I don't want him to become a thief, oh. Because how can a small boy know that if she has to buy sugar to drink Gary? Anyway, so they, they, they treated me as, as a bad child for buying sugar. Uh, let's, so uh, sugar let's, uh, let me give let me give the opportunity to to, to your colleague to respond. Have you had to share with me? Uh, yeah. uh, if anybody should uh, because you are wearing a number of caps, apart from being a political analyst, uh, uh, a strategic a strategic partisan who don't quite carry. A, a large party card, but uh, you are also you are also a respected traditional leader, uh, and I know that you would have opportunities in in your community to speak to youngsters and encourage them on how to live a very lean, sober, and uh, you know progressive life. What are the challenges? that have come over us and has made us to now be acting in every material particular in a manner inconsistent with all the facts that Larry just relayed now about politicians of the Second Republic. Okay. Now, when you look at what Larry has done, Larry has simply looked at a very small part of the country and then made his conclusion on the basis of that. In the 80s, which he's talking about, 1979 to 83, we also realized that there were so many states. That was the era when we had the back in zoos of this world. We had so many uh, rots go, go, going government, on in government, the government money for government house. You know? Absolutely. What is wrong in keeping government, government, money, government, in government, government house. money in uh, government house? <laughs> yeah. They, it's the same presidential system of government that produced a governor that said, when he was asked the uh, mineral resources in Nigeria, he was mentioning Fanta, Coca-Cola, and stuff like that. So, I mean, so when Lere highlighted but what that, he said, but that in itself, but in that in itself, uh, 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 that in itself, yeah. uh, let's be honest with ourselves, that, that in itself is the hallmark of democracy because it was actually accepted by his people, irrespective of his level of education, he could not have been as educated as, say, Bola Ige. He could not have been as uh, educated as, say, uh, Jassy. But at that point in time, the electorate of, of the old Kano state, which is a combination of today's Kano, Jigawa, and which other state, actually believed that he was the best person to represent them in the office of the governor of Kano State. Absolutely. But now, if the presidential system of government at that time was so beautiful in the way it was implemented and experienced, then why did we have the coup? Because there would never be any the coup same question, except the, the same question. The, the same question will uh -huh. rattle you about the First Republic. If the First Republic was as so ideal as so, why did we have the 1966 school? <laughs> gentlemen, yes, I can tell you why. Gentlemen, why did we have the Gentlemen, you really, really, you, gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, you've really given me, you've really given me a very beautiful show today. I want to say a thank you to the two of you. I guess the uh, the other man who was supposed to join you because of the position he took. When I first, uh, when the election, the shadow election took place, uh, and the kind of question I asked him there may be chickened out today. But you see, uh, thank you for the benefit of your, of your presence on the show tonight. This is where we wrap it up. Thank you, Father. Uh, I am. Thank you, Father. Bola Hoba.